Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Bit Workshop. We're making the drawers for my pedestal desk, uh, but I'm making the video about the making of these drawers a standalone video, really because I'm focusing on the Lee D4 dovetail jig, which I have. Now, that jig has been superseded by the D4R, and I think there's a pro version or, or something like that, but it's essentially the same jig, and what you see me do with this jig, you can do with yours. Now, the key thing about my drawers is I'm trying to make them as near to the traditional standard as possible. And for that reason, I've chosen chestnut for my drawer sides and backs. And because my desk is walnut, of course, the fronts are solid walnut. Now, I've got three pieces of chestnut, and they're all sort of slightly awkward shapes um, and uh, sizes. And so I've got to be really careful how I go about cutting out my drawer sides and backs. And my setup here is very straightforward. I've got a pair of path dogs. I've got a, a, a Veritas bench dog there. I've got my Festool guide rails and my TS55. And I'm now going to use this just to uh, start cutting out uh, the rough sizes. And with those path dogs, you can see you get a, a really nice square cut. Now, I've cut uh, a number of these pieces now to the approximate length. Uh, they're just slightly over. I'm now going to uh, get them uh, to approximate width. And you now see the advantage of having this mobile workbench of mine as an outfeed table. I've got the walnut that I'm going to be using for my drawer fronts on the uh, trestles in front of me now. And I'm just going to go through and do a very quick assessment of what uh, draw fronts are going to be coming out of which uh, pieces of wood. And I'm doing this with my yellow uh, crayon in my hand so that I can highlight uh, defects. And it's a process you need to go through in order to uh, make sure that when you, in your mind, say I'm going to use this piece of wood for this task, you know jolly well whether it's feasible or not. <laughs> I've sanded the draw parts down to 180 grit and the sides and the backs are behind me and I've put a coat of Osmo Poly X on them already and I'm about to put a coat of Osmo Poly X on these draw fronts and this is before I've cut them to size. The idea is that the Poly X will protect uh, the, the various parts from uh, glue during the assembly process and it's particularly useful for the insides of the drawer where later on it gets a little bit more awkward to get in there to produce a nice finish. Now I'm going to be using the Lee dovetail jig to do all of these dovetails and you might think well what on earth is this box he's brought in? Well this is the box I keep my Lee dovetail jig inside. I just take the the jig out of the box and ordinarily people would use it uh, on their bench like this but actually uh, I find the height isn't ideal because you're having to crouch down a little bit that's where the box comes in if I turn the box over like so I can now mount the lead jig on the box the jig is then bolted onto my box uh, using some bolts provided by Lee and my box is clamped to the top of my bench and I'm now working at a much better height. Now every now and again with all of your woodworking machines you should check that they're set up correctly and that's what I've just done with this D4 jig uh, that I've had for about 11 years. Now uh, Lee have brought out uh, successors to this as the D for R and the D4R Pro. Uh, and I can't show you any of those because uh, I haven't got one. But there is a kit 
uh, and I have one here uh, that allows you to upgrade uh, one of the older jigs to give it some of the capabilities of the newer ones. Uh, and the particular capability uh, which this allows you to do is to be able to make half-blind uh, dovetails in a single pass. Now, there is one modification I've made to my uh, D4, and that's the addition of this vacuum support system. Uh, in order to fit it to a D4, uh, all you need to do is to uh, change over these uh, finger template support brackets. I've got my old ones in the packet here. Uh, and you put on these new pieces uh, which come uh, with the vacuum support. And this can be moved forward and backwards very easily. It's got magnets under here. And the writer fits within uh, the space of these two pieces of metal here. And as you move the writer to the left and right, so this part moves. And underneath here is a vacuum attachment. The only thing I've found is that I've got a 36 millimeter hose from Festal uh, that is uh, too loose and one would need to uh, do something about either supporting the hose to keep it in place or making an adapter to get the right fit. The 27 millimeter hose which I have here uh, is too small. So what I've done is, as I usually use the 27 millimeter hose, I found a piece of plastic which came from an old vacuum cleaner, you know, from the bit that the, uh, you plug various bits of tubing into to get uh, the tools that go up to the ceiling and so on. Well, this is a piece of that. It's slightly tapered. Uh, and the uh, Festal hose fits in one end, and this fits on there as a nice, snug fit. And so that is my solution. And with the router in here, uh, you'll find that this dust extraction uh, system is virtually dust free. Uh, you don't need to have any hose coming separately off the router. Uh, the hose on the vacuum support does the job. Now I'm just getting set up to do the half blind dovetails which go between the draw fronts, the walnut, and the draw sides which are chestnut. And a half blind dovetail uh, looks like this. Here's a draw front and there's a, a, a side and you can see the dovetail joints there. Now we're getting set up to do the, the tails of the joint first. Uh, if you imagine in my sample piece, this is the draw front, then the side piece here is the bit with the tails, and they look like dovetails. And so we're gonna do this now, and that, that's my piece of chestnut, uh, my front's uh, walnut, and th these parts are called the pins. So you've got tails and you've got pins. Now when you're doing a, a setup or the initial setup when you first buy the jig, uh, these instructions that come with the Lee jig are absolutely superb. And this is the best set of instructions I've ever had for any woodworking tool. Now I'm working on the drawers that go in the top of the desk, the top three drawers, and these are the narrowest drawers uh, that I'll be making. Now, I've not cut any of my stock to length at this stage. And I've done, done that deliberately because I've not used this particular dovetail cutter uh, before. And therefore, I've got no uh, experience or reference uh, to, to know exactly how it should be set up. So by having my stock too long, if when I've done my first joint, uh, it's not quite right, I can cut off. Uh, the small piece at the end, which forms the joint, and start again, having made some adjustments to the jig. Now, the first thing we're going to do is to set up uh, these uh, finger guides. Now, they move freely on this uh, framework here, and so you can position them more or less where you like. They go together in pairs, and uh, the uh, pieces like this can be separated with a little spacer, uh, like this little piece of wood, uh, so you can end up with uh, joints which are uh, wide here in the tail section and narrow here on the pin. And uh, that can look quite attractive. But it just so happens for these top uh, drawers, and here's my width of the drawer, that I just need a, a set of these guides all pushed up together, and that will be exactly right. So I've got those in place. I'm going to put these there just as a bit of extra support uh, for the writer base uh, as I'm going across. 
Uh, they form no other function other than that. And now I'm ready to get going with my first cut. Now I've got the writer set up and I've set uh, the depth to uh, 20.5 uh, millimeters, which is what's required with this particular cutter. And I've measured that using a caliper. I've got no dust extraction on the writer itself. I'm relying entirely on the dust extraction provided by the vacuum support unit. Now what I hope you noticed there was virtually no dust whatsoever. There's just a little bit here, uh, but uh, these are larger pieces, nothing that's going to affect your, your nose or lungs. So that's really, really good. I'll take this piece out and then you can see how it looks. And there it is. My tails. Now we're now going to get set up to do the uh, pins in the walnut for the front. First thing to do is to raise the finger template up by undoing the two screws at the side and then tighten those two screw knobs up. And now I can insert my piece of drawer front in there. Now we've just done the tails and I now need to rotate the finger template. As simple as that. It's just turn through 180 degrees and it's put back very carefully. And here's a piece of wood which I'm going to insert in here which will allow me to position uh, the drawer front absolutely accurately. So I've inserted that in there and I'm now going to push the drawer front right up against this piece which is there and when it's in place lock it down. I've locked it at both ends. So this piece of drawer front now is in the correct place. I'm now going to move my front piece completely out of the way. And I'm now going to lower my template down so it's sitting on the top of the workpiece. Now at either end of the finger template there are these scales. And the scale that we're using uh, for this operation is the scale uh, that's coloured green. Green are used for uh, half-blind dovetails. And there's the same uh, setup at the other end as well. And we're going to set up on the scale uh, the thickness of the drawer sides. And in my case, that chestnut is 14 millimetres. So I'm going to adjust this so that the mark, which is on this piece underneath the scale, is lined up with 14 on the scale here. Once that's lined up, I tighten it up and I do the same at the other end. Now I'm all ready to go. I've got the uh, vacuum support in place. There you can see I've done those pins. So if I now take the, the piece that I'd done earlier these two should fit in nicely. That was done just by following the instructions for the lead jig and making sure that my uh, cutter was sticking out the correct depth from the writer. Mm -hmm.